As you might have heard, international health experts have declared that Africa is now completely free from the wild transmission of polio. That's a major success in global efforts to eradicate the disease. It's called wild polio virus because it's circulated in the community, but no longer. The disease is now only endemic in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Health workers embarked more than 15 years ago on one of the continent's largest ever immunization campaigns. The Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, has hailed the success in a video conference. Today is a day of celebration and day of hope. Today we come together to rejoice over an historic public health success the certification of wild poliovirus eradication in the African region. On behalf of the Polio Oversight Board, our partners at Rotary, CDC, UNICEF, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and Gavi, and all donors and partners, I congratulate the people and governments of Africa for your leadership and determination. Your success is the success of the world. And that's the Director General of the World Health Organization there. Well, for more on that major milestone in the battle against polio in Africa, I'm joined now from the western Nigerian city of Ibadan by Professor Oyewale Tomori, who's a professor of virology and member of the WHO's Africa Regional Certification Committee. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us, uh, Dr. Tomori. Um, just tell us what wild polio is and how devastating it's been for victims in Nigeria and other parts of Africa. Uh, thank you very much. In the early 60s and 70s, uh, virtually we're getting like every three, four children paralyzed uh, by polio on a regular basis, uh, daily. There were over 300,000 cases being reported annually. Uh, that dropped until today, we can say, uh, for the last four years, we've not had a single case of polio in Nigeria. And we're the last country, of course, in Africa to do that. But then it means the whole of Africa is free of polio. Part of the problem and why it's had such a terrible impact here is because many people, from what I understand, rejected the polio vaccine. I mean, so it's been something of a logistical, logistical challenge. For us in Nigeria, I think the, the journey to polio freedom was quite torturous and it was very difficult. And some of what I call self-imposed obstacles. Um, we failed to vaccinate our children. And then in 2003, we had the boycott, uh, 2013, sorry, 2003, yeah, we had the boycott of vaccination by a group of people in the other parts of Nigeria. And even though the vaccination was resumed a year later, the, the after effect lasted for quite a long time. Uh, we had a last case in 2016, and that's why uh, you have to be free for at least three years before we, we, you can be declared free of transmission of the wild polio virus. Uh, I think it's a good achievement. It's something we should be proud of, uh, but I think it's something we should have done much faster than we did. But, I mean, what do you attribute that extreme reluctance to, to be vaccinated to? I mean, because of, obviously we've got coronavirus now. I mean, it, vaccines coming out, people will need to be vaccinated and all the rest of it. And uh, lessons could be learned from your experiences with polio. You know, the thing, I think part of it is the kind of education we let our people know. Um, for people of my generation, we survived by chance, not by choice. Um, there, there was no vaccination in my time, so many of our people died. And you remember in those days, there was this thing in different parts of Nigeria, Banji, Abiku, or whatever, in which they think children just come and die, they keep coming back. It's not that. It's those diseases that they were not vaccinated against that was killing them. And you can see that has changed. And that's why people used to tend to have many more children than they need. Uh, now, than because they are afraid that one disease or the other will take them off. But now with this vaccination, then that has solved the problem. From what I understand, in spite of the fact that there is a vaccine, there is actually no cure, but there are vaccinations. Sure, definitely. I mean, from time memory, vaccines have been available. 
for use of people, uh, because we do not take the vaccine, then our children get infected and they remain paralyzed for the rest of their life. And that's the danger thing, the thing about polio. Once you're paralyzed, you're paralyzed, there's no cure. And that's why it is important that people should get vaccinated. Um, why do people refuse vaccination? I think it's because, like I said, we do not educate them enough. We don't give them the important information they require, let them know the advantages of vaccination. And a lot of people who are opposed to vaccines seem to speak louder than those who should be talking indeed that these vaccinations are of advantage to our people. I was making a statement that in those days, people used to have a lot of children because they're not sure how many of them would die. And things like Ubanji, Abiku, and all those things came, not because uh, these are uh, uh, spirit children, but, um, but that they are dying from all these uh, diseases, measles, yellow fever, polio, all those kind of things. And so when we vaccinate them, they're protected. That's the whole essence of vaccination. Uh, to, to assist people uh, against getting infected by those other diseases. Well, from what I understand, Professor, it's taken over a decade to convince parents in some parts of the country to change. I understand that at one stage in 2013, healthcare workers were shot in the northern Nigerian city of Kano because of rumours that the the, the vaccine was a Western-inspired plot. I mean, how did you manage to win them over? I think what happened was the fact that we went back to the traditional leadership. Uh, the, the, the emirs, uh, the rulers there, we got them convinced of the advantages of the vaccine, and they went and convinced the people. They did a mighty and fantastic job. Uh, both religious leaders in the mosque the, the traditional rulers. One thing we always say about about the North is that if the governor calls a meeting, is the opposition party will not show up. If the MA calls a meeting, both parties and even the governor show up. And so you took advantage of their position to allow the people to, once they were convinced about it, it was easy to get back people to start getting their vaccination. And I think we must continue to do that, make use of our traditional system to ensure that our people know what is going on. And once those people do, do believe in what you're saying, they will be they are the best group of people to assist us in getting vaccines to the children of this country. So, Professor, I mean, how do you and your team and, and the WHO and all the rest of them actually go about verifying this claim that wild polio has been completely eradicated from Nigeria? Good question, and you're quite right to ask that question. You see, uh, there's what we call surveillance. I mean, that's the best thing you can be. You're a detective. You're all over the place. People are over. They are using and checking children. Uh, the laboratories provide support to ensure that there are also other, quite a lot of things that could cause paralysis. But the laboratories confirm and say that well, this paralysis is due to polio or is not due to polio. So one of the easiest things that was done was establish fantastic laboratory system all over, all over the, 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 the country. Uh, actually, we had just two major ones. But then the surveillance field of it was it. They went out in all the different parts of the country, checking any report, what they call acute plastic paralysis. Went out to check any case that showed paralysis of the children. They were, the, the samples were taken from them, and these samples were taken to the laboratory and com confirmed. And people went out in different, I mean, you must have heard of the thousands, literally thousands of health workers who went out there, you know, monitoring what is going on. Even in the, the uh, the security compromised part of the country. They risked their life. Uh, they went out there, and you mentioned something about some of our workers being shot at one time or the other. Those are the kind of risks that these people took to ensure that you know Nigeria was free of polio. Right. Um, now, now, just Professor, to put a damper on this very significant announcement, um, as you say, the naturally occurring wild polio virus is now gone, but there is still this vaccine-acquired polio, isn't there? Just explain that to us. Yeah, you see, what happens is that it is a, it's a major... The vaccine that we use, which is called... Uh, is an attenuated virus, that is weakened virus. But it's also... The, the only way it can work is that you have sufficient immunity in your body so that you know when the vaccine comes, the, the vaccine does multiply within the body, but it doesn't cause the disease. And the, the only the way to do that is that you should have some measure of some immunity yourself, so that the vaccine will multiply, improve your immunity, 
However, if you do not take any vaccination at all, and if the presence of malnutrition, all those other conditions come into play, then the virus can do, do, does multiply in the body and can cause, by combining with another virus in the body, can also cause paralysis. The solution to that is ensure that your children get vaccinated. Once they are well protected with that vaccine, the, the polio virus cannot, cannot uh, the arteriovenous virus cannot make any damage to the, to the child. But even right now, a new, uh, what we call NOPV, new OPV virus is actually on, which does not mutate as much as the one that's banned. So we are sure that as soon as we continue our routine immunization in this country, none of our children will get any, any polio, whether vaccine derived. But for the wild one, we're sure already. But the vaccine derived one, all we need is to ensure that we continue vaccinating our children and then they are protected from any other vaccine of the polio form. So, Professor, some 10 years ago, Nigeria accounted for more than half of all cases of wild polio around the world. And today it's become the last, well, actually yesterday, it's become the last country in Africa to be declared free from the virus. I mean, how you were part of that whole attempt to get rid of it, you must be very proud. I mean, how were you marking this milestone yourself? Thank you very much. You see, um, one of the things that I got involved with was that I mean, the, the, the one has to be patriotic in what we're doing. The time I was working with the WHO uh, before I came back to Nigeria, every time we tallied the number of polio cases in Africa, uh, it was always a, a thing of pain for me to see that my country had 50%. And so it, it was something that we, we had to do something about that for the sake of our country, for the pride in our country, to go out there. If you ask me, how am I celebrating? The only way to celebrate is to make sure that no other diseases are taken care of. That means there's no rest. The only celebration you have is when every child in this country becomes free of any disease that there's a vaccine for. And so, yes, we won the battle, but there's still more wars ahead of us. And so to celebrate is just so, well, we, we rejoice that day, uh, that when we, it was announced, we, we knew about it, but then work continues. And I want to appeal to our people. Remember I mentioned something about the fact that... Pro you know, Professor, I want to thank you very much indeed. I mean, really, and congratulations. Uh, professor Oyewale Tomori is a professor of virology and member of the World Health Organization's Africa Regional Certification Committee.